guys? Yeah, Rastafari. Let's get it. Alexi Panos here. Simba. No, who is this? No, that's this is Scar. 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 There we go. He Scar. needs to get his Lion King I facts I don't even straight. remember Lion King. How do you not? I was in the Lion streets King? when Lion King came out. No, you weren't. I was. You were young. I was, but I was. I was movies. a little boy who didn't watch Disney. I was. I was fighting. That's a lie. And dancing. And it's playing, a lie. And Everybody basketball. watched Disney. No, they didn't. Okay, <laughs> hold on. Let me just share this. Oh, hello. We got 86 eyeballs on here. Get I see it. some friendly, beautiful names. Hi, people. So today we're talking about racism. Oh, Preston's on. Yeah. Is he sharing it? There we go. I know, Warren, I think it's bullshit. He's Share. saying you didn't watch Disney. Share this video right now. It's about to get real. It's Pop about off real quick to get. And share. If you are watching the replay of this, Go ahead and share it right now as well. Because it's about to get real. It's about to get real. So we're talking racism. Oh. Uh. We're talking success. Oh. Uh. And we're talking failure. Blup, 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 blup. Rastafari. Let's get it. Let's get it. Okay, Preston's just going to walk away like that. <laughs> Clearly, it's about to get real and he can't handle what's about to happen. We are here. We are here. So here's the funny thing, Preston always brings the Palo Santo in, and like, Palo Santo, people are like, does Preston smoke cigars? I don't smoke like, anything. No, so Palo Santo, love. this is like incense, is what it is. It's wood incense, for anyone, that this is sage incense, for Puffing anyone on the sage. who's curious. Puffing on the sage. It's not a very odd looking cigar. Does the audiobook, the alchemist, and is listening to Scar. Right okay. Beautiful. Alright, let's get it. Let's, let's get it. Let's jump let's get right it. in. Let's get it. So let's talk racism first. Yeah, we can, I mean, do you want to start with what happened yesterday? Let's start with that. Yes. So, ah. Yeah. So yesterday, <laughs> I'm doing a, a live on YouTube, and um, it's going well. Things are happening, people are leaving comments, and then there's this comment that comes through that says, Preston, you are a Kentucky Fried Chicken eating greasy uh, porch nigger. Whoa. And there's a lot of words in that one. Yes. <laughs> and he continues to say these things, um, and I'm live. And so people are like, just ignore him, right? And, and at first I was going to, and then it was like, no, let me, let me address this. And so I had a conversation with him, and I, I told him, you know, and this is what we'll talk about. Um, I told him how, how I understand what it feels like to hate myself so much oh, yeah. that I think it's someone else. Yeah, and here's the thing that I want to just quickly point out. A lot of you, if you're anything like me, are like, whoa, holy crap, how could somebody say that? That's so ignorant. Oh my gosh. Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. And yet most of us are not that far off in other places in our lives. No, for sure. So we're, we're constantly judging and persecuting and doing different forms of racism oh, of to other people based on how they look, how they dress, where they live, mm -hmm. what they're eating, how they talk. Yes. We're constantly judging and persecuting others based on our own self-hatred and our own unacceptance of ourselves. And and this is what we really wanted to talk about because we just watched um, I Am Not Your Negro. Yep. Such a good film. Great movie. Amazing documentary. Yeah. Um, which talked about the civil rights movement and just kind of told through the lens of a few of the leaders of the civil rights movement. And it's just incredible to look at how scared we are of our humanness. Mm -hmm. How scared and, and just totally petrified we are of the places within ourselves that we don't understand yeah. yet. And for us to criticize another human being based on how they look or how they act or talk or anything about their humanness is truly to persecute a part of ourselves. Yeah. And you know, we could point the finger and get mad at this dude for being a racist and for being ignorant and all of that. And you know, in this reality and paradigm, he absolutely is. And is that not just a reflection of where we yes. still do that? Yes. Within and, ourselves? and in reality, you know, here's the thing. Martin Luther King said it best. Um, you, you cannot, uh, what is it? Uh, darkness can never drive out darkness. Only, only love can do only that. Only light or love can do that, right? And so let me just finish the story. So this guy's calling me a nigger and all of these things. And I say, guys, because everybody started getting mad at him and calling him names, right? So now there's just a bunch of hate. Swirling, swirling in my feet, right? <laughs> and so for me, I had to stop for a moment. I said, guys, let's presence this. Yeah. Here is somebody who clearly is hurting. Yeah. And, and instead of meeting him with love and compassion, we're meeting him with more hate. And the issue is, is that 
What's really happening, and we all have to understand this, the Buddha said you will not be punished for your anger, but by it, right? This guy is so upset, so angry, that he needed me to be a nigger, right? And so for me, I stopped and I said, listen, um, I see you, brother. I understand what it feels like to be so down and out that you need to blame the government or black people or whatever you need to blame in order to make sense of why you cannot be with your own self. And so for me, I, I wrapped it in that love blanket and then I told him, if I saw you on the streets, I would hug you. Mm -hmm. And if, if you attempted to try to come at me in some form or fashion, I would beat your ass. But <laughs> I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do any violence to you because I love you. Um, and it's, I, I reminded him that it's very easy to be a keyboard warrior. Um, oh, yeah. Big but time. like in truth, like there's only one of us here, you know, as above, so below, as within, so without. And there's only one of us here. Yeah. One. And let's, let's, let's kind of branch this out into this crazy world that we're in right now. Where yes. We're in a, a very divided Yes. And divisive time where yeah. politics is dividing us, uh, race and religion is dividing mm -hmm. us, clear boundaries and borders are dividing yep. us. You're and a Mexican, stay over there. And it's, it's I'm not racist. <laughs> but it's an it's an interesting time, guys. It's an interesting time because as much as we fight for what we believe in, mm -hmm. we also get to look at the fight. Right? Because people say, well, yeah, I got to fight for my rights and what I believe in. And, mm -hmm. and yes, yes, like we all have a right to our opinions. We all have a right to believe in what we believe. But it's the fight. Mm -hmm. If you have to fight for or against something, then you're not truly steeped in the truth of your own being. Yes. And this is something I learned the hard way because I was fighting against so many things for so long. And a perfect example was I was a hardcore atheist for a really long, like hardcore, right? My, my whole teenage to early 20s, I was reading every religious book so that I could fight against why my view was the right view, why my belief was the right belief. And that fight kept me in so much pain, mm -hmm. so much pain. And it was all perfect because it eventually led me to where I am today. But then it repeated itself when I was a raw food and vegan yes. for a long time because then I was fighting yep. for the animal rights and fighting for this and fighting for that. And mm -hmm. it was always a fight. And if I was fighting, what made me any difference from the thing that I was fighting? It's just a new dogma. It's a new hate. It's mm -hmm. a new dogma. It's a new level of ignorance around unacceptance and around not truly being able to be with all of life and to accept all of life and that doesn't mean that we get that we fold like Preston said I love you I will hug you but if you come at me I will beat your ass <laughs> right? oh, it doesn't a, speaking of fight here's here's my good buddy Bart oh yeah <laughs> Bart, Bart likes to to put up a little fight sometimes <laughs> he wouldn't call it that no 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 <laughs> uh, cool so so you know just in bringing this all home because, you know, a lot of us are keyboard warriors. Mm -hmm. A lot of us, now that we have the internet mm -hmm. and Facebook and comments and all these places, we like to spew our opinions out on the world. Yeah. And there's this, this thing around righteousness. Mm -hmm. Like, this is my opinion and I'm right and blah, 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 blah. We're all entitled to our opinions. And let me teach you and find a bunch of articles that, you know, represent that and put a picture quote under the thing that I keep copy pasting on everybody's thing like this is the game everybody's playing it's, it's the game it's mental it's, masturbation it's mental masturbation but it's also the fight mm -hmm. and again it comes down to if you are in fight mode if you are fighting for your righteousness for your stance to be the right way and mm -hmm. the only way and so anybody right. disagrees you're with you so right. then they are the you bad are person so and right. you are this and you're, you are a part of the problem, not a part of the solution. <laughs> and I say that from the humblest place because I did it for so many years, so many years. And I literally fought my way into stress. Yeah. I was living a life of fight and resistance to what was versus accepting that people are people and people are different and people have different and varying beliefs and people are on different parts of their journey. And yes, I can have my opinion, but I am in no way going to fight for it to be the only right one way because there isn't one only right one way, period. I'm gonna fight for that. No, just kidding. Do it. <laughs> Position creates opposition. Yeah. The moment you position yourself as right, you create opposition. The minute so, you defend yourself, you now create an offense because you have a defense. Yes. Which means a war. And so, 
especially those of you who are here to, or say you are here to serve, um, are you willing to speak to people's listening in such a way that calls them forward and does not necessarily chastise them mm. or make them God, wrong so for where they are? Now, I say this so because I, Alexi had her story about it. I have my story about it. I was a hardcore Christian, right? And then, and then I read the autobiography, autobiography of Malcolm X, and he said, you didn't choose your religion, you didn't choose your language, you didn't choose any of those things. Your slave masters chose those things. And for me, that was it. I quit, I'm out, right? And my mom called me, or I talked to my mom, and she said, just don't turn your back on Jesus. And she was, you know, she had her own uh, experience of it. And I went through a process where I was so angry and so righteous that I used Bible verses to, as a weapon. Yeah. Right? You, you, you talk about heaven? Luke 17, verse 36 said, The kingdom of heaven is within. What about that? Hear ye, hear you. Won't you say ye are gods? I was using all of this stuff in order to weaponize myself to make other people feel lower than me. Which is a, a, another form of persecution, which was the same thing he was fighting against. Exactly. Just the new dogma. <laughs> so we become what we are fighting against yeah. by succumbing to the fight. Yes. Yeah. Somebody said, how can you, I saw something interesting. Yes. How can you serve when some people's ideology is to kill you? Yeah. Here's the thing. We make kill you wrong. Is that true? First of all. Yeah. Is it true or is that what Fox News has fed some of us? All news at yes. this point. But kill, you are killing people with your thoughts. You are killing people with your words. You are killing people with your judgments. Yep. And I say you as the collective you, including both of all us. All of us. All of us. So kill, whether it's in the physical, emotional, or spiritual, energetic yes. stance, we are all doing some version of killing other people based on our judgments and perceptions of how they're wrong and we're right. Yes. So I, I totally, I get it. And it's hard, especially when you feel like your security and safety is in jeopardy. And at that point, like Preston said, you know, I, I will show up as love, but I will also have boundaries for myself and protect myself, but I'm not going to force and fight my beliefs onto you. We love you. Um, so what do you guys want to talk about? What would you like to have a conversation about that? Cause well, success as well. Yeah. I'd like to talk about success. Yeah. Beautiful. So, uh, wow, that was perfect. Uh, Salam said. Uh-huh. Christian said, this is all well and good, but at the end of the day, you have to position yourself. He who stands for nothing will fall for anything. That is a platitude of some truth, yes. But can you stand for everything as a possibility? while still holding your boundaries because here's mm -hmm. the thing about humanity that i found and this is just my own personal belief but i found that there's a distinct distinct difference between recognizing that we are all part of the human race all of us right we're all part of the same race the human race and yet we are all distinctly different so while i can appreciate and embrace and accept and love the, the unity, the unifying concept of the human race, I can also have my preferences. So yes, it is, it's, it's a both and Christian. It's about having your beliefs and standing for what you as an individual appreciates and needs and your boundaries and your preferences while also respecting the unifying whole that we're all a part of. So it is standing for something for yourself and also standing for, for all of humanity as well. So that's, that's the dance that I take and the stance that I take. Mm -hmm. Tamara said, on the topic of boundaries and opinions and positioning, I'd love to hear your unique thoughts on forgiveness inside of atrocities. Ooh, yes. It's a beautiful question. Mm -hmm. um, I'll say for me that um, sometimes, many times, out of my greatest pain came my greatest gain that uh, out of, you know, out of some of my deepest wounds also came my deepest wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that it behooves me to uh, have a belief that we are always co-creating with the Creator. I remember reading uh, a line in um, 
as a man thinketh, that said essentially that the slave and the slave owner are both co-conspirators. And I remember reading that line and getting very upset. I was, what do you mean slaves are co-conspirators? No, they are not. They are victims to the slave owners. And then I took a deeper look and I went, interesting. They both played their roles. They both played their parts. And if I believe in a perfect love and a perfect God, then all is perfect, even when it doesn't appear to be to my uh, limited perception. Yeah, I think for me, you know, there's a lot of things that go so far beyond my personal experience of would I like this to be what's happening? And my ego is like, no, I don't want this to happen. This is terrible. This is an atrocity. And I mean, I'm, and tomorrow you know this, I'm like super passionate about, so is Preston, so many atrocities in the world, like human trafficking and, um, you know, how the animals are treated and how the environment is treated and how some people don't have basic needs. Like I am so deeply connected to those mm. um, injustices of the world. And I'm absolutely doing my part and playing my role within that to, to try and shift that. But it also is, it's a part of life to have a contrast. And you know, Preston and I are reminded about this when we go on safari in Africa and you see nature. All of nature. All of nature is contrast. All of nature is both peaceful and violent. Okay. All of nature is both survive and surrender. All of nature is, um, to rain and also to pour sunshine down. And nature is this beautiful contrast of, of light and dark. And I think, you know, our human mind wants it all to be light, but- Because we're chasing good. We are, but to accept that life is life and to accept that atrocities are just as much a part of life as birth and love and, um, you know, freedom and joy and all of those things is to truly embrace all of life. And yes. I think so many of us are embracing half of life and, and wondering why we're only feeling half of life. Like we're only feeling half the joy. It's because we haven't fully embraced all of it yet. Yeah, we've cut, cut ourselves off from the, the full experience. And the question is, is, how do we know that that's the case? Because that's what is. And so the moment, the moment we're in a conversation of things should have been or they should be, we are literally in God's business. And so um, forgiveness, yes, um, atrocities, uh, you know, many perspectives on those things. Yeah, and, and forgiveness, you know, a lot of us think that we have to forgive other people. You, you truly only have to forgive yourself. Yeah. Like it's truly only the forgiveness of what you allowed, what you perpetuated, what you helped co-create, what you stood for, what you didn't stand for, um, the limiting beliefs within ourselves that attracted the situation in the first place. Um, it's truly always a forgiveness of self. Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Miriam said, how can I stay open in relationship with my partner, with Peter, when sometimes he's not meeting my standards? So here's the thing. Um, Love, in essence, can be this beautiful, unwavering, unabashed thing, um, but relationships have standards and relationships have conditions because you have two people coming into a partnership together and saying, here's my conditions, here's my conditions, great. Sometimes you're gonna meet those conditions and yay, everything's gonna be great. Sometimes you're not. <laughs> so, so when we don't meet each other's conditions and standards, then you get to really stretch yourself in your own leadership capacity to say, where am I not willing to go yet within myself uh -huh. in order for myself to feel complete, whole, and secure within my own standards without him meeting it or not? Where am I not willing to go within myself for him to actually hear me and to communicate from a loving space? Mm. Um, where am I not willing to go within myself to be more flexible and to see his side? Because standards aren't just about, well, here's my standard and I'm staking my foot in the ground because then we go back to the first part of this conversation, which is righteousness. Yes. And we end I'm up losing right. every, every time we're in righteousness. <laughs> you should be doing what I think you should be doing. But to really be in relationship <laughs> with anything in life, whether it's a person, 
animals, environment, or life in itself is to constantly be asking ourselves the question, what is needed of me now in this moment? Mm. What is needed of me now in this mm. moment so that I can adjust and move and be like water with life? Yes. You know, That's like... a hell of a question. It is. Heaven of a question. It's a great question, Mary. Uh -huh. I love it. Get it. Jade asked, advance in Perth? Perhaps we may do an advance in Perth. Uh, we may be out there this fall. We will let you know. Faux show. Yes. Joanne said, the key is respect. We need to understand our right ways and everyone's right way. Exactly. And respecting everybody's humanness. Like, respect that people have their own side of the story. I remember when, um, when uh, Trump got elected and um, I was feeling all sorts of feels. All sorts of deals about it. Uh, I asked myself, where am I not willing to go yet to fully be what's needed in this moment? And I went and I talked to three people who I knew voted for Trump and I asked them why. And this was a week after. This was after like the first week in office. And it was really awesome because I understood that we all actually wanted the same things. But we were coming from a different blueprint and a different paradigm of how those things would get accomplished. Mm -hmm. But we all wanted the same thing. And it brought me to such a beautiful place of like understanding and compassion and acceptance and also being willing to still stand for what I believe is, you know, gets to emerge in our world. Um, and it's the same thing. I forget. Have you seen that interview with a CIA agent? Mm -hmm. She was a CIA agent and they interviewed her and she said... Oh, yeah. Something to the effect of, and I, I'm, uh, my apologies if I butcher the story, but she said something to the effect of, you know, when you, when you spend time on the ground in other places, mm. you really start to, to see that yep. to them, we're the bad guy. Oh, yeah. And to them, they're, they're just saving their family. They're protecting their families. They're, they're looking out for their own security and just like we would. You know, and, and Preston and I travel all over the world to places in the Middle East and to places where people are afraid to go and all this stuff. And, and they're just people like us. Like They literally just want to live a normal life and have a normal family and mm -hmm. want to protect themselves. And, and God forbid if anyone ever came here on our soil and threatened our sovereignty and threatened our, the safety of our family... You don't think that people would be calling us terrorists based on how, what we would do to people? You know, so there's, I mean, again, it goes into this place of, yes, we get to be the individual and we get to really see how it affects our personal life, but we also get to like pull out of the individual mind and go into the collective mind and see the human experience and how this whole thing is not only connected, but it's woven by all of us. Mm -hmm. Like none of us are innocent in this game, none of us. Yeah. There is literally a cause and effect to everything in life. And if we can sit here and honestly think that the effect that we're living in right now is not based on a cause that was set in motion way before we were even here, then I don't know. Yes. We just need to be able to really see that there is no innocence in this. We are all playing a part. We are all playing a role. We are all responsible for all of it. Yep. Even the plastic bags that we use coming out of the grocery store. Yes. All of that stuff. We were just having a conversation about when you throw something away, the question is, is where is away? Yeah. And away, most of the time, is in the middle of the ocean killing all those fish that you like to eat later on. Um, away is in landfills raping and killing our land and that's right? just after it's produced yes and so there is a cost to the, the production of every single item that we needlessly buy and consume more of and throw away in a month and don't even think about in two weeks yeah there's a cost there's a cost to everything and we have become so uh, distanced from the cost of our lives how much it costs to actually live our lives Especially in America and especially in the Western world like we have it so good and yes There's people in our country who have it bad But in relation to those who are living in extreme poverty in the rest of the world We are wealthy beyond belief and yet we are so so disconnected from the actual cost of How we live our lives and one day we're gonna wake up. We're already in it But one, one day we're gonna wake up in an effect that doesn't feel good 
mm -hmm. where we can't breathe anymore. We have to wear masks over our face like they do in China. Hopefully. That's not the case, but it's a possibility based on how we're rolling so far. What's up, Jules? Um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Kate says she posted a video in a uh, posted a video yesterday, and a bunch of people from an anti-spiritual spirituality group got on there and wanted to punch me and said a lot of awful things. I wasn't sure how to handle it. I didn't engage. I can't read the rest of your comment, Kate. But here's the thing: I love that you still did the video. Um, because again, we live in a world where everybody's got an opinion and you are absolutely allowed to have your opinion. But when it comes at uh, the, the sake of somebody else's opinion, then you're literally fighting against the thing that you're standing for, which is a complete contradiction. And here, here's the thing, guys. Powerful questions always produce and create an inquiry mm -hmm. for powerful answers. And so one of the most powerful questions one can ask themselves, there's a few of them. One is, what would love do now? Mm -hmm. What would love do now? Right? This, if you really sit in that, it's a very easy, like, oh, well, love would do that. But like, if you really sat in that, like 10 times a day, it would change your entire life. Everything. And, and to be clear, not romantic love. Yes. But like unified acceptance, compassion, love. I'll tell you right now, we went into uh, Urban Outfitters yesterday after we went to go get food and um, I tried on a bunch of things and then I asked myself that question. Do I need these things? What would love do now? Do I align with the um, ethos of this company from the, from the top down? Not really. Do I even know the ethos of the company from the top down? Yes, you know, I, like, I actually do, but most I know people a don't. Of it. Yeah, um, and so but, that's yeah. that's a mundane sort of routine thing, shopping for clothes or whatever the case may be. I walked out of that store not buying anything because the answer to what would love do now was love would not buy some more things that one does not need from a store from somebody who um, has different values than I would like to support. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting question. And, and this is a great segue into success because, yes. you know, I think a lot of us in the Western world are after this um, idea. Make of money, 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 money. And we see it. I mean, because we have Instagram and, and all these filtered versions of reality, we see that there's a definite ethos around what success looks like. and. And the question Preston and I have been sitting in is like, what is real success to us? And it's going to be different for everyone, but success isn't this idea of, oh, it's got to be this house and this zip code and this car and this whatever and this boat and this life and whatever. Success is a feeling, right? It's a feeling. And we, we kind of took a bird's eye view look at the feeling of most people who are on the success chase. Most people who are like, in it and in that hustle and after it, right? Most of them don't feel successful. Even if they're making six, seven, eight, nine, ten figures. Oh, yeah. Most of them feel incomplete. There's a feeling of incomplete, inadequacy, not enough yet. I need more still. And is that success? Is that truly success if there's this feeling of I'm still not there yet? And to us, that's an absolute no. And, and we checked ourselves, like, are we in that feeling? Are we chasing this more, 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 more? Are we chasing, like, we need to build bigger and expand faster and even more knowledge, right? Yes. Are we chasing that we need to learn more and dive deeper into some, What are we chasing? And why are we chasing? Trying to get high, trying to get high, because our whole society has been set up on this idea that the thing, when we get the thing out there, then we'll finally be good enough in here. And that is an absolute trap. It's and so trap. the game always, in all ways, is to define it and then design it. Because yeah. if you do not define what success is for you, society and circumstances and a whole bunch of other things will decide that for you, period. It, yeah. We've seen it a thousand times. Most people never ask themselves, what is it that I truly desire out of this life? How much is enough? Yeah. What is it that I actually, what, what would I like to experience in this lifetime? Most people don't even think that that's possible. Yeah. They're literally living paycheck to paycheck 
trying to survive. And I understand that doesn't feel good. It's scary. Some of you guys are saying, oh my God, I have kids. What are you talking about? Design my life. I, I'm just trying to get by. But like in yeah. reality, are you? Yeah. Are you? Sometimes you need to downgrade your, 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 your things, your stuff. your stuff and your, your, your bills and upgrade your experience. Yeah. Right? Some of you guys are trying to keep up with the Joneses and of course you're running on the freaking never ending treadmill. Yeah, I'd love to share. I read a story about a family, a guy who was a, a finance guy in New York City or San Francisco, I can't remember, one of, one of the two. And his wife had a great job and they were working all mm -hmm. the time. They have like four kids, never home, yes. huge house that they never got to spend time in. Yes. And they kind of checked in and did a check in like what Preston and I were talking about. And they said, this is not, and they were making together well over seven figures. And they were like, this is not feeling good for us. So they sold everything, bought an RV and have been living in an RV for the last two years, <laughs> traveling around the country. And um, I think they rent their house out that they bought. They rent it out and that's their source of income. They make just enough. Yep. And they're about to take their RV into South America and do the whole you know, South America thing. And they talked about how what has been created is deep relationship. And they recognize how disconnected they truly were as a family. And you know, not saying that that's the way either. That, that may not be what feels good for you, but really check in with yourself. Are you successful? Like, even if you've got a lot of stuff, even yeah. if you, you're sitting in the dream that you had five years ago and you're like sitting in it, you've got the house, you've got the partner, you've got the book, you've got the business, uh -huh. whatever your dream was, uh -huh. that's out there, and you're sitting in it, is your brain still on the future someday that you may never get to, right? Because here's the, the truth is you're gonna get to the someday and then it's gonna be another thing. And it's the hamster wheel. And whether you work for yourself or you work a nine to five, it's this elusive promise that somewhere out there is your happiness. And it's just not true. It's mm -hmm. just not true. And, and you know, again, P and I have traveled to some of the poorest places in the world financially where people don't have electricity, they don't have running water, they don't have toilets. They literally go outside with a hole in the ground. And they are wealthy beyond belief, more than most people who have everything because they have chosen and defined what success means to them. Community, family, hope, spirit, smiling, nature, working with your hands, whatever. They have defined success in a completely different way than what we have, and they are happy. Mm -hmm. And we live in a world where like the number one topic of books in, in the bookstore is like how to find happiness. Yeah. Because people aren't happy, and we can see it from prescription drug use. Like mm -hmm. most people are drugged up, beyond being an actual functioning human being without it. Yes. Because we're so, we're so dissatisfied. Yep. So, but it's, it's of our own making, of our own choosing. Yeah. So guys, let's play this game right now. What is it that you choose? Mm -hmm. What does success look like for you? What do you desire in this lifetime? Answer those questions, any of those questions. Just type them in the comments. Type in the comments right now, what pops up for you? What do you choose? Yeah. What do you choose in this lifetime? What do you choose in the next three years? What do you choose? What are you excited about creating? Right? Because you're always creating no matter what. Okay. The question is, is it by design or is it by default? Most people, by default. Most people, some, they, they, they got out of college or got out of high school and somebody said, you'd be good at this. And next thing you know, 12 years they're later, they're doing a job they never actually love. And that success comes at a cost. It's not even true success because they're not fulfilled. Love and family. Love. Productivity. Productivity at what? Community, love, and intimacy. Love yeah, I yummy. saw Neri on here. Neri, happy birthday! Mm -hmm. Happy birthday, Play Neri. Play Ocean Community Kiddos, yes. yes. JP, I saw you on here too. What up, what up, brother? Being happy and healthy, awesome. Love, travel, friendship. Boom. Beautiful, love it. Mm. And guys, this takes us into our last and final topic, is failure. Yep, they want us to answer the question. Oh, okay, what question? Uh, what is it that we choose in this lifetime? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, we can choose that. <laughs> yeah. um, so we actually did this exercise this morning. And it's fairly long, so I'll give the condensed version for myself. Um, abundant living for me means being truly in alignment and sharing my gifts with the world. Um, allowing those gifts to create an impact and be of service for humanity, however that manifests. Um, being fully expressed in my love for Preston and mm -hmm. also my love for my family. 
um, having time to spend with my family in a beautiful place mm -hmm. where I'm surrounded by nature and my bare feet can be in the earth and truly tap into the abundance of nature all around me um, to feel grounded, to feel at home in my body, to feel vital and passionate and purposeful within my body and within all of my relationships that surround me. Mm, yummy. Dig it. Mm -hmm. uh, success for me is um, wild sex with Alexi <laughs> as much as possible. <laughs> I, kid, I kid. Not really. I don't actually kid. Um, we had sex this morning. <laughs> Mom, Dad, I hope you're not listening. Um, so, uh, yeah. What she said. Mm -hmm. like we, like, What's interesting too is he... he um, did this exercise with a group with stretch and he recorded it and then he came home and asked me and I'm actually building my webinar for Friday on abundance and this is a question I asked in the webinar and so it's been on we've been talking about it all morning whatever and he asked me and I explained it and then he's like watch this and he played the video and it's like the, the exact same, same thing, thing which course. is why we're married that's my boo that's my boo uh, yes so, so oh so yes going into failure uh -huh. A lot of people are afraid of failing, but truly the only failure in life is if you do not live into your highest mm -hmm. excitement, your highest gifts, your highest pleasure, your highest purpose on this earth. And, and to me, that, that is failure. If we don't actually surrender to what brings us joy mm -hmm. and makes us feel good. Mm -hmm. Like what good is a life full of money and stuff and wealth if we don't feel good? We have failed at that point. <laughs> like, For sure. That feels like a, oh, I just did that the wrong way. <laughs> yes. Not that we believe in right and wrong, but is it effective? And it's probably not the most effective thing. Yeah. And so for me, speaking about failure in the material world, like in the like success and failure kind of uh, language, um, I would say that failure it doesn't happen uh, overnight. Failure is a habit. Yeah. Failure is... Uh, sort of a chipping away. It is making excuses. It is uh, yes. slowly but surely just uh, not actually believing you when you declare certain things because you procrastinate and uh, find ways to make excuses for why you are not, right? So failure um, in its essence for me in the material world is like, yo, when you are not being your word, to you, because remember, it doesn't matter else who else is looking, whoever, who catches you or doesn't catch you, you catch you. You know when you say, today I'm going to step into this, and then you half-ass it because you're scrolling through Facebook the whole time. Or you half-ass it because, oh, uh, somebody cut me off in traffic, so now I can't actually do what I said I was going to do because I'm having a bad day. Right? This is, first of all, bad day, does that even exist? It's life. It's, uh, you know, it may be a... Um, frustrating situation frustrating moment yeah. you know uh, uh, a few moments a few minutes of you know not necessarily feeling completely in alignment but like a lot of us do that and that's how we create failure right so success failure whatever you, it's all the same coin it's all of it is a habit right I think it was Aristotle that said um, we are what we repeatedly do excellence therefore is not an act but a habit yeah, and, and you know, there's an example that uh, we like to give where it's like a bank account, right? And imagine your bank account or your cup completely full and all that fullness or that fullness in your bank account is like your joy, your vitality, your passion, your purpose, your yes to life. And then every little time that you break your word to yourself or move in a direction that's not your direction or say yes to something that you really wanted to say no to out of people pleasing or moving towards this you know, idea of success even though it's not resonant for you. Every time you do that, you're spending your currency. Mm -hmm. You're literally going, here, take more, take more, take mm -hmm. more. And then you get to the end of the day and you're like, I feel so depleted. Mm. And we wonder why. It's because we're giving our energy away. We're spending our money in these small little habits that are completely ineffective and out of alignment for our lives. Mm -hmm. But yet, if we just check in, like, is this in alignment for me? Does this feel good? Does this resonate? And I say feel good, and I don't mean that like it, feel, it feels good and you're going to want to do it. Because there's some things that are in alignment with my soul that it's like, I don't feel like doing it. But it's in full alignment with my soul. And it's like, oh, I know I have to do that. 
and it takes effort and it's hard, but it's an alignment. Mm. And every time we move from a space of alignment, we're literally like, it's like the universe, God's source or whatever is giving us money and going here, fill your bank account. Here's more of that. Because when you act from alignment, you act from source energy. Mm. And when you act from source energy, you act on behalf of me. And when you act on behalf of me, this field, I'm going to give you more and keep pouring into you so you can keep pouring out through you. And that's a really powerful place to be in. And we're not getting that right all the time by any means, but it's a practice and it's something that we're aware of and consciously sitting in that question. Is this in alignment? Does this feel resonant with who I actually am? Not this idea of who I'm supposed to be or who I think I have to be, but who I actually am. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Anything else guys? We're going to, we're going to get some food. We're going to get some food. <laughs> um, Sam, you're right. You get to be right about all those things that you wrote on there. Um, we love you. Um. Cool. Hello, guys. It's looking at loving all these little grateful flowers as well. Nick, yes. Tamara, Amy. Boom. Agneska. Oh, I really want to learn how to pronounce your name. Uh -huh. Ag Agneska? I hope I'm saying that wrong. Uh-huh. Um... Okay, uh, <laughs> Lily, hello, <laughs> Sam. I just I gotta just like shout Sam out because I'm so confused reading your comments. Um, I feel like Sam, Sam, if you didn't get to watch from the beginning, please watch from the beginning because we talk um, uh -huh. very specifically about people who like to pick fights and be righteous, especially through uh, Facebook and all of that stuff. So please watch that um, so we don't have to repeat ourselves. But sending so much love to you, brother, and hopefully you have a beautiful night and check in with yourself on where all of that is coming from. Um, Nelia, yes. Laban, Jody from Tampa, hey, hey, Danny, Esolina, Cambria, hello. We love all of you guys. What you going to eat? Not sure, Michael. All I'm is not well. sure. I'm not sure. I've been really indecisive about my food choices lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. I have been. So we may be the same. Perfect. Yep. I miss you guys. Love you both. Awesome. So we love you guys. Um, check in and truly like sit with that. What does success mean to me? And then... Maybe write it down, like get really specific so that you know when you hit it Yeah. and you can get off the hamster wheel of life. And guess what guys, everything we just said, grain of salt, mm -hmm. doesn't make any of it true. It's our opinion. It's just our opinion. Every, wait, it's all perfect. Hold on. This is a disclaimer that it should be there, but also we should know this. Anything anybody says is always come coming from their opinion, their blueprint, their framework. So um, if it resonates, awesome. If it doesn't, awesome. Um, but we hope if anything it instigated and you know pulled up something within you to look at, to question, to to see from a different angle. That's our only hope in this work. So hopefully it did a little of that for you. Um, you guys are awesome. We're going to eat. Love you. Yeah.